Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode two, season two of Facilitation Station. My name is Barry, and today we are gonna be talking about a simple icebreaker known as polar bears around the ice holes. Now, basically this is a simple uh, icebreaker, also a puzzle. Uh, there are many ways that you can treat it uh, as far as uh, cognitive thinking, even math equations. If you're a teacher wanting to do some uh, simple math equations, uh, if you're working with adults, you can have fun during a break and try to get them to try to solve a puzzle together. Uh, maybe sit at a table during lunch, uh, introduce the puzzle. Once you get everybody to realize how to figure out the puzzle, then you can hand them separate sets of dice and let them move to other tables to kind of see if they can get engagement at other tables as well. So the idea is to spread the knowledge, if you will, to see how well you people can kind of come together and share information, uh, share their knowledge, and also just to kind of work together to solve a problem. So uh, let's get started. Uh, I like to start off with simple dice, just like this. Uh, these are dice I found at the store by, uh, made by Bicycle. Um, there are six here, according, maybe according to who you're dealing with. Uh, it is usually with adults. I start with six die, uh, and then working down from there, teens, maybe uh, five or four, and then working with intermediate, uh, four or three, and then primary. If I'm working even with primary students, um, I'm looking at two or even one uh, dice. So uh, just kind of think about who you're working with at that time. But uh, instead of me trying to show you on the camera here, I'm also going to show you a cool little app that a friend of mine showed me. And if you want to stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you some other cool features that that app provides as well. But for now, let's go on to polar bears around the ice hole. Now, so to show you the activity, we're going to go to the computer and I'm going to show you an app called Make Dice. Make Dice was introduced to me by a friend named Chris Cavert. Uh, Chris was really good at what he does and he found this cool app out there in the world. Uh, but again, it's called Make Dice. Now I want to show you this uh, particular app. So we're just going to click here. It's actually going to take us into the app. And we have uh, three versions here, which uh, let me show you. You can actually change the variations of it, color, uh, and so forth. Or you can even add dice. And as I add more dice, let's start with six because you guys are adults. And I want to see if you can figure it out. Um, I'm also going to change the color and make them all the same. So let's start here. Now I have six dice on the table. It was six dice on the table. Uh, let's pretend that we're in an airplane and we're flying over the Arctic and we're trying to look and spot for polar bears. Now the best way to spot a polar bear is that they always gather around an ice hole to go fishing. Now in this particular case, um, uh, polar bears only gather around the ice holes. An ice hole will always be an ice hole. And then also if there are no uh, polar bears and no ice holes, then basically the dots that you see are igloos. So an igloo is an igloo, an ice hole is an ice hole, and then polar bears always gather around an ice hole to go fishing. So with that clue and that little story, Let's see if we can figure it out. I have six dice on the screen. Now, as I count, I'm gonna count one, two, uh, three, four, five, six polar bears. Can you see the polar bears? Using the clue that I gave you in the story that if we were looking down from a plane and looking down on the dots, uh, what do you see? I count six. Can you see it? Well, let's try again. I'm gonna do a little reshuffle. Looking again, I'm gonna count. And, I, and the number of polar bears that I see is one, two, three, four polar bears, five, six, seven, eight. I see, looking closely again, I only see eight polar bears around an ice hole. Now, with that said, um, I wanna give you another little hint. I also see two other ice holes besides the two that are gathered, uh, but there are no polar bears there. Are you kind of getting the hint? Uh, I kind of went a little quickly on giving you the hint. Sometimes I'll let people roll constantly, you know, a few more times just to see if they can figure out the puzzle. But with that, let's roll again. Can you see it? 
Uh, I count here one, two, three, four polar bears, only four polar bears around an ice hole. And I only see two ice holes, one of which does not have polar bears, and the other has four. Now, with that said, everything else is an igloo. Are you getting the sense of it? Well, just kind of help you along. Let's get rid of some dice. Uh, let's get rid of these so that I can show you just really quickly. We have a five that is showing. That five has a center dot. Can you guess? Yes, that is correct. That center dot is a nice hole and the four dots around it are your polar bears. Because remember in the story, polar bears only gather around a ice hole to go fishing. Ice holes can only be ice holes and then everything else is just an igloo. Well, in this particular case, uh, you had four polar bears. What about this? No polar bears, but there is an ice hole. Do you, you understand? Okay. And then if you got something that was without, let's see if we can roll it again. Oh, there's your ice. Oh, there we go. Six. Now, because there is no center dot, that means there are no polar bears. So that means what you see is only igloos. So that is the quick explanation of polar bears around the ice holes. Now, there is a version two. A version two is a little bit more math oriented. So just kind of let you see on the screen, there's six uh, dots on the screen. But regardless of whether it be igloos, an ice hole, or polar bears, there's always fish under the ice. Now, whether if the polar bears can see those fish or not is another story, but there is always fish uh, under the ice. In this particular case, there's only one fish underneath the ice. I know that to be true. So let's just do three dice in this particular case. Looking at this, how many polar bears do you see? Well, you should say zero. How many fish are underneath the ice? Well, there should be uh, three and three is six and another one fish is basically seven fish underneath the ice. Did you figure it out yet? Let's roll it one more time. Let's see if we can figure it out. Uh, there are four five, six fish under the ice. Did you see it? So let me help you out again. And we'll just go down to one die. Uh, and I'm also gonna go back to the main camera and show you that same dice here. Now, if you look at the front face, and then if you look at the back, we know that regardless of what's on the front, the front and the back together are always going to equal seven. It's always going to equal seven. So if you're showing three facing, seven minus three is four. So I know there are four fish underneath the ice. Now, to kind of carry the story a little bit more, if you want to kind of help them, you can also in introduce more math equations. How many total fish are underneath the ice? And then how many polar bears, uh, then how many fish can the polar bears see? Now remember, in this particular case, you have three uh, showing. So how many polar bears do you have? You have two polar bears. So if a polar bear was actually able to stick their heads in the ice, how many fish could they see? Well, they can only see at this time four. So if I added more dice, if I was going to carry out the equation again, how many fish are actually under the ice and how many can the polar bears only see? Well, in this particular case, there is five and 11 and 13 fish underneath the ice, but with 13, there's only two fish that the polar bear can see. How come? Well, the two polar bears looking in the ice can only see the two fish on the other side. The other two dice? Well, that's just simply a, a thing that, since there's no polar bears, they can't see anything. So in that particular case, we, we want to kind of carry the equations a little bit more. Uh, there are more interesting ways to do the math equations. I'm going to provide that for you in the descriptions down below. So be sure to check those out. Uh, also, uh, if you want to check out another variation of how to use this particular app online, because this is great for virtual teaching. If you're still doing schools teaching online, uh, just kind of get it fun uh, and then have contests between your kids that when you're on screen and you kind of roll the dice 
who could be the first one in the chat area to actually give you the answers. Uh, just kind of make it some fun competition in that way. Uh, but there are, there's even a third ver variation, if I'm not mistaken. And the third variation simply adds plankton because fish eat plankton. How many plankton are there? Well, it kind of gets a little bit more complicated, but I will have that right up for you in the description right below. Now, if you stuck with me for this long, I thank you so much, but I also wanted to include the other variations on how to use the Make Dice app. Now, the Make Dice app is a paid for app. There is a light version that is free. Now, of course, with any light version with apps, there comes with uh, advertisements. There's also minimum things that you can do in the settings. But so it's two or three bucks. It was worth it for me to go ahead and get it. But so that way you don't have to deal with the advertisements when you're working online, that kind of thing. And you have full access. So let me show you some cool things here. Um, you notice that when I scroll through, I can change color. But because I did some other things in the settings, I was working with some folks that uh, I was able to add different pictures. And so different symbols allowed me to add processing procedures to it. Uh, also uh, added pictures of people before and pe or names of people. So let's look at that really quick. We can actually go here. And so you'll see here on the symbols, um, you can add any s picture that you want to. Uh, and Chris Cavert, uh, I want to include that link in the description down below. It has an excellent blog on how to add certain pictures that you can use for processing. Um, so if you were asking questions like, um, what did you get out of the situation? If you're a facilitator and you're working with people, add a symbol uh, that has can be associated with certain questions, give it a role, and then let people have to solve that. It's really cool. Uh, the other thing that you could do is assign people. This is a group of folks that I've worked with at a small church. And um, you notice that uh, with each person, I was able to assign them various situations. Also, uh, I was able to add names. And so if I rolled a name and I said, hey, Eddie, uh, Eddie, it seems like it's your turn. Can you tell me a time when, and then you can ask a certain question. So it kind of gives engagement, gives chance back into the game. It's a pretty cool system. Um, and so there's different ways and it already comes in pre-packaged with different colors. Uh, unfortunately, these are the only colors that you can do. I wish they offered more colors, uh, like maybe a customized color palette for branding, but that is not in this particular case. So hopefully you found this helpful and uh, you can use it for your next virtual meeting. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this activity of the icebreakers with polar bears in the, uh, around the ice holes. Uh, if you enjoy this activity, I sure do hope that you just click right up here and uh, to subscribe. Uh, our mission, our big uh, Harry Auditions goal for this year is to get to 1,000 subscribers. How do we get to 1,000 subscribers? Well, it really comes down to you. If you like this kind of activity, if you want to see more, give it a like. Ring that bell for notifications to let us know, let you know when the next video is coming out. But also when you uh, ring that bell and you give it a like, and especially if you share it with other teachers, facilitators, or adults that you're working with, if you share this video, it helps tremendously with the algorithms in uh, YouTube, and it really gets the word out there. So again, uh, there's going to be a little symbol up here if you want to click to subscribe. Also, if you want to see last week's video, you can click right here. Well, again, thanks for visiting Facilitation Station, and, and until next time, we'll see you later.